People seem to love cars, especially high-performance cars. This is Douglas International Raceway in Douglas, Wyoming. It's a National Hot Rod Association drag strip, and several times each year, professional and amateur drivers do their best to win races here. I used to think that drag racing consisted of two cars racing each other to see who could cover a quarter mile strip in the shortest amount of time. If that were so, then the person with the most powerful car would win every time. But this is different. This is ET racing. ET stands for elapsed time. It requires a lot of skill, certainly more than standing on the gas pedal. Consistency pays off, and an excellent driver in a slow car can beat a good driver in a fast one. In this program, we'll explain to you how ET racing works. But remember, to win, whether you're driving a 500 horsepower Super Pro rail car or a 65 Plymouth Belvedere, you've got to do the math. In racing, ET stands for elapsed time. That's the time it takes to go from the starting line to the finish line. At race time, each driver makes a prediction of his performance in seconds. That prediction is called dial time, and that prediction is calculated to the 1 one hundredth of a second. So before the race, each driver has to calculate a dial time. Several hours before the races begin, drivers participate in time trials. Time trials are just like the real races to come, except that finish line results don't count. Several passes down the track let drivers know how their car's running. There are so many variables that affect a car's performance that some drivers make notes in their journals after every pass down the track. We keep everything. We keep uh, reaction times, 60 foot times. We look at our time slips. We record everything into a book. We calculate it back into what we call a uh, uh, ET predictor, and you put in what the barometric pressure is, what the temperature is, what the humidity is, and then there's a mathematical formula that it goes into, into a program, and it tells you exactly what the car's going to run without the wind factor. Each variable makes a difference in the car's performance. Between time trials and race time, sun or cloud differences change the track temperature. Humidity can rise or fall several points, but in particular, wind can be a big factor, both in direction and velocity. This morning where there was no wind, I was able to put back-to-back -back passes, identical passes together. We picked up on a head wind and it slowed me down three hundredths. So I recorded the speed of the wind at that time so that when I go up there in competition, I can record the wind speed, calculate that back against my dial time and slow my car down and, and try to run close to my number. Because that's what it is, it's a numbers game. At race time, Dan has computed all the variables and written his expected quarter mile time on the car's window. Judges put that information into a timing computer. Even though he's racing against an opponent, Dan's really racing against himself. Dan has estimated his quarter mile time to be 10.48 seconds. Should he be faster and cross the finish line in less than 10.48 seconds, he'll probably lose the race. That is, he'll lose unless his opponent finishes in even less time. That rule keeps drivers from cheating. Like saying your car can only do 120 miles per hour when you actually plan to drive it at 160. The starting computer controls the starting sequence to allow the slower car to start first. The fast car goes last. In theory, the fast car catches up to the slower car at the finish line.
the first one to cross, without going more quickly than estimated, wins. That's what ET racing is all about. In the Super Pro category, Dan is allowed to install an electronic device to help him control his car's performance. The tree has a standard countdown. Once the lights flash down from the stage pair, it's 1.5 seconds until the green light signals the drivers to go. If a car starts before the light turns green, it's disqualified. Dan's car has an automatic transmission and special electronics operate a brake on the transmission. While the green button is held down, the brake is on. When the first countdown light flashes, Dan releases the green button. The electronics take into account his reaction time and calculate a precise time to release the brake. If all goes well, it's at the exact moment the starting light turns green. A few seconds before the start, Dan revs the engine up to its maximum horsepower, knowing the transmission brake will hold the car in place. When the brake releases, his car is off to a fast start. Now underway, his tachometer shows his engine revolutions, as well as his elapsed time from the start. From experience, his optimum shift point is at 7,000 RPM, and he's programmed a red light to flash when he's supposed to shift. Now he's watching the elapsed time and the finish line. One one hundredth of a second is all it takes to lose a race. Everything depends upon the driver staying in complete control. This kind of racing involves a lot of strategy and a lot of math. You need to know which figures are important to the solution of the problem and which ones aren't as important. Dan's elapsed time, or ET, varied between 10.46 and 10.49 seconds in all of his time trials and races this particular race day. If you do the math, you'll find out that his position when crossing the finish line varied by only inches. Let's see what happens as we change variables on the ET predictor. 